let's say that we have an event A and the probability of A happening or succeeding is two sixths of the time. Or in other words, just one third of the time. This is the probability of A occurring. And similarly, we can have event B and the probability of B happening will be three over four. Three fourths of the time B will occur. Now, we want to know the answer to what's the probability of A and B happening at the same time. What would we use to figure this out? Well, to sort of use a, use a visual aid, what we can do is to uh, showcase the whole solution space first and sort of divide out the probabilities in this. For instance, this rectangle in this case will represent all the possible uh, events that take place. Either A doesn't happen, B doesn't happen, B happens, A happens. All those possibilities will be represented in this rectangle. And notice that it's divided into six subsections because we will highlight it for the amount of times that the event A occurs. So just labeling this, the probability of A occurring, that will of course happen two six of the time, but to represent that in all our possible uh, ending states or outcomes, we can just highlight two of the following six boxes, which is two six of all the possible outcomes of A. A could either not happen, which is in the white, or it could happen, which is in the red. Now, similarly, we could showcase the event B happening by subdividing our whole solution space into areas of four and highlighting three of those areas. So for instance, just splitting this up into four separate areas, and that's four. Now, highlighting three of the areas would result in this area being highlighted, this area being highlighted, and one of these two, let's choose this one to be highlighted. Now notice that in some areas, these two overlap. They overlap in this square, this square, this square, and similarly in these squares as well. Now, if we want to count up how many occurrences we have out of the total solution space, we have six solutions of them both happening at the same time, divided by how many total other options that are possible, which is just six multiplied by four, which is 24. This, if we simplify it, if we divide by six, will equal one over four. Now to sort of know where this one fourth came from, we can go back to our original probabilities, which were two six and three over four. Notice that if we multiply them together, the two six multiplied by the three over four, we obtain our six over 24, which is what we got in this step by just counting the boxes. But if we wanted to generalize this and sort of know the reason why we had to multiply, we can see that the denominators equal the total sort of solution spaces of all the events that could take place. For instance, in, in this box right here, a and B don't take place. And in this box, only A takes place. So this is all the solutions of B and A taking place. What could happen if they don't or if they do? So the denominator showcases all the total boxes, but the numerator is a little bit more tricky. The numerator showcases how each of these uh, red boxes intersects with the blue boxes. Notice that we can mathematically 
sort of showcase this by knowing that each blue column will intersect with each red column exactly one time. This means that each blue column will interact with two red columns. So this means that if we have three blue columns, they, will, they must interact with a total of six red columns, leading us to six, in, six uh, intersections. So therefore, that is where the six comes from. It comes from the two probabilities, their numerators uh, multiplying out, and therefore providing us with six intersections.